This is the first question. Now the last second question. How we transmit? So first of all, we have experience, something limited. We have grasp something very limited. Okay. And on the basis of filters, we have created some meanings, our own world. Okay. Now how I will transmit that to the other person? Well, you know that language is the principal tool that facilitates this transmission of knowledge. That's what time binding is. When the knowledge of one person is transmitted to other. Okay. So without language is not possible. Now the question is whether it is structurally similar. If we reflect upon our language, we find that they must be considered only as maps. Korzybski calls language as map and reality as territory. Understanding that you have a map of Bombay, you have a map of Mumbai with you. Okay. Is this map is territory? No, it's a map. It's a map which is at reduced scale. Right. It's a representation of the ground, but it is not the ground. Understand? This is the concept which Korzybski is talking about here. The structure of the reality and structure of the map are different. Correct? And therefore you are misled. You are misguided. Right? You may not go where you want to go. Because the map which you are following is structurally different than okay, the actual territory. Is this clear? Apply same thing to language and reality. It's a process world which we cannot grasp everything. So is it that your language also can grasp everything and describe everything as it is? If you are seeing a flower, can you describe the flower as it is to your friend so that the friend will have the same aesthetic experience of this person? <coughs> Understanding what, what I'm saying? Okay. It is because your language cannot express that exactly that what you see exactly that what you experience at non-verbal level understand that now that creates a gap in transmission okay that creates a problem to which i have called it as the problem of language Korzybski studied the language and understood that most of our languages are based on the aristotelian logic okay our all indo-european languages for example and those are based on aristotelian logic Law of identity, A is A, first Aristotelian logic, truth is a truth, that's an example, okay, what we do, we are identifying something, okay, but Mr. A is criminal, what are we doing, we are identifying Mr. A with criminal, so the word is, the verb is, Korzybski said is a highly problematic verb, because that verb identifies the two things as same, A is equal to A. Next comes the law of excluded middle. Either A is equal to B or A is not equal to B. There cannot be, there cannot be any middle ground. Okay? Either truth or not the truth. Right? There is whole Indian mythology, you know, which says that how the myths are created. And if you have listened to uh, Devadat Patnaik, then he always says that how the meanings are created and how those meanings are described through our mythology. Okay? Where he defines myth as the truth for me. Myth is a truth for me. That may not be a truth for you. So it's a truth constructed by me. But in the Aristotelian language, okay, it either can be a truth or it is not truth. Third is law of non-contradiction. Not both, truth and not the truth. It cannot be both. So either this or this, there are only two things possible. Married or unmarried, no third category. There are only two things which are possible. Right? So that is a very Aristotelian logic of understanding. That, that, that there is no contradiction at all. Either this uh, or this and it cannot be both. Now, all our language systems are based on these fundamental, our grammar of language is based on this fundamental Aristotelian logic. And therefore, Korzybski says that the verb to be is highly problematic and therefore he suggests to remove the verb to be from our language because to be creates identification. So when we say Joe is a criminal, so we are equating one noun Joe with another noun criminal and then we say that both are same. And there is another ease of projection. 
that Johnny is bad. Okay, so adjective hai which we are like superimposing on that uh, person, right? That he he is bad forever. The person is bad forever, right? He cannot change. He is lazy means he is lazy forever. Okay, so the entire problem is related to ease. Can you separate heart from heartbeats? Right, heart is a doer, heartbeats is a function. We can't separate the two. But in language, when you express that, okay, you say that the heart is beating. As if heart is different and the beating is different. So he said that a subject-predicate relationship also brings a very asymmetrical understanding of our world where we will try to separate, differentiate the doer from what he does. First, our experiences are limited. The way we transmit also has a problem. These are some funny examples. You can see that the below one. Press any key to start. Girl is searching where is the key called any. There is no key on the keyboard. Called any. Our language is absolutely confusing. Okay? And the first one also. Are you sure this is how we get data into the clouds? <laughs> right? Because you mean something, the other person means something. Okay? And grammar helps all this confusion. <coughs> Same for sign languages. Right? I hope this you know and there are so many images on the internet. One single sign knows different. Right? If some foreigner asks you that how I, 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 how I look and if you say give this sign because we mean that this is beautiful. Right? But for her that lady this may be something else. You know, depending upon from what culture she comes from. Okay? So even the sign languages we see have problems because they have different their own cultural meanings. So let us revisit our question. How do we experience? We have seen that. Do we behave with the awareness that what we know is incomplete? We don't keep scope that some alternate is possible. Some alternate reality, some other truth is possible. Okay? And we cannot know everything at one point of time. Right? The problem is that now Korzybski has shown that how our experiences are limited and how we cannot, uh, cannot uh, uh, experience all. Now he is saying you should behave with that awareness that whatever I know is incomplete, whatever I say is my truth and another truth is possible. Same way, do we use language with the awareness that what we express is not the same as reality? Right? We just use language, but we don't care that the meaning with which you are saying, whether the other person is receiving your words with the same meaning or not. Okay? And therefore we use words very loosely, you know, without giving any context to those words. Now these are the two things which Korzybski identified, which leads to very inefficient time binding. Okay? Because we are not conscious of what brain is doing. We are not conscious of our process of abstracting. Now this lack of consciousness leads to so many things. It leads to issues of elementalism, identity, miscommunication. We completely ignore the word, the, the importance of silence. Okay? And then the ego is pampered. That I know everything. What I know is right. What I know is the only truth. And then we are not ready to take responsibility also. Okay, so there is, there is no scope for a dialogue, there is no scope for acceptance because you are not conscious, you feel that everything you know is complete, is the final truth. Okay, and then the insanity or the insane behavior of humans you know, come from all this according to Korzybski. Now let us go to the last part of this lecture. So what? Now what to do? We have understood that we are experiencing in a very limited capacity. Our language has a lot of limitations. So I experience something which is incomplete. I transmit which is something incomplete. So now what I should do? Right? I can't stop looking. I can't stop hearing. Okay? I cannot improve the, say, my sense organs capacity because it is given to me. Right? And I cannot stop from abstracting. I cannot stop from using language. So what should I do? So these are the things which Orzebski suggests prescribes in general semantics. First is be conscious that you are abstracting. For that he used the word non-Aristotelian system which he himself he has written in Science and Sanity that don't take it as anti-Aristotelian. 
So what Korzybski is doing is only changing what Aristotle has given given us, okay, and making it more relevant to our times, and therefore it is not anti-Aristotelian, but it is non-Aristotelian, okay. And then he talks about map territory relationship. The map is not the territory. Map is not the reality. Means words are not the things that they represent. This is water, but the word water, I cannot drink the word. I have to drink the water. Okay, Aristotle thought that the meaning is inside the word. Understanding that? The meaning is inside the word. Now we are understanding that the meaning and words are two different things. Okay, so words are, therefore you can, we should not take the words at the face value. That's what we say. Okay, so words are not the things that they represent. Second dictum is a map covers not all the territory. That is, words cannot say all about everything. We can use language to talk about language. So I'm trying to understand the reality from your reality, not by experiencing uh, on my own. Okay, so that is you can talk of language. Uh, you can you can use language to talk about language. Okay. Now here comes last point: extensional devices. Now these are the extensional devices which the Korzybski gives. Okay, uh, to avoid the issues of uh, language, he says use indexing index everything so, dating dipesh is not dipesh right so dipesh in 2017 is not the dipesh who was in 2015 everything tells us that can you now understand with these extensional devices it 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 tells us that the world is in process right the person has changed from 2015 to 2017 okay it's a process world Use hyphens. We actually differentiate certain things, though they are actually the same. But our language differentiates between. So try to use the hyphens. Okay. Use quotes if you are going. You are using specific meaning. Use the word etc. When you say etc., okay, it means that there is so much still to say. Okay, there is so much which I have not understood, but still I have to say that. Okay, or it is there. Okay, quantify. So if you just say it is hot, less hot, very hot, better to quantify it. Say it is 45 degrees, so things are more clearer. Qualify it. And what I am presenting is as per my understanding of general semantics. You may have a different understanding. I am open for that. Okay. So to my best knowledge, use the words in my opinion. Now this will make, this will take you closer to the idea of time binding. Lastly, general semantics calls for what we call as non-verbal awareness that is the importance of silence if you remember structural differential i've told you that the world is an object world okay right but when we transform it into a subjective world of our own and then there are problems can we understand the object world as object world without bringing language in it korzybski says that it is possible with what he calls practice of silence and the number of techniques which he talks about turn down the volume and contemplating semantic relaxation all these are very important concepts in non-verbal awareness put forward by Korzybski uh, and he gives tremendous importance to being silent okay reducing the chatter of our mind because if we, when we are silent also we are talking you know, in, in our mind so even that topic talking has to be stopped if we, if we can experience that objective world as it is Okay, by removing, by bypassing the problems which are created by language, by bypassing the problems created by uh, our uh, human senses. Okay, then he says that uh, we are in a better position to have more deeper and fuller experiences and therefore gives a lot of importance to non-verbal awareness. He says that think silently, discover the structure of the silence or whatever you are experiencing at object level search proper structure of language which can match the structure of that silent process and then try to express it verbally so finally we end with this entire concept of efficient time binding if we do that if we do all this which the gs prescribes what is survival of fittest according to general semantics survival of fittest is how best you can survive in your time how better you can bind time simple were a concept of the personal time binding 
how much I can learn from my own mistakes in the past. Simple, it's a personal time binding. Okay, we carry the grudge. We blame ourselves for the mistakes that we have done. Korzybski says that don't blame from the uh, yourself. Learn from that mistake and forget that experience. That is the perfect time binding. And the person who time binds time is fittest in time or fit, fit to survive. So finally, what Korzybski wants? Korzybski wants that we should behave like animals. We should stop fooling ourselves. We should not be animals. We are time binders. So we should practice time binding and conscious abstracting. We should inculcate scientific attitude. We should learn to unlearn. Practice silence. Lastly, GS might help us to answer our own present questions, to widen and deepen the horizon of our own gaze, so that what we want and what we achieve become truly worthy of ourselves as a time binder. Lastly, this is a photograph of uh, Korzybski. Uh, in 1919 in World War and you can see his wife Mira Edgarly who was a famous American painter and painting on ivory was her uh, skill. So Alfred Korzybski's wife who helped him to build the structural differential was a painter, was an American painter. These are some of her paintings. These are on ivory. <laughs> Lastly, how General Semantics came to India? General Semantics came to India through this person, Mr. Balwan Pare, who was the founder of the Pedalit Industries, the industry that makes heavy coal. And he introduced General Semantics in India in 2000s. And he founded Balwan Pare Center for General Semantics and other human sciences in Baroda in 2009. And at present, that, that is the kind of a headquarter of General Semantics in India. Okay. Now this Balwan Parekh Center has formed different nodal centers at different locations such as Surat, Rajkot and all. One of the nodal centers is in my college and I am the coordinator of that center where we run certificate courses from last four years uh, teaching general semantics to our students.